Well, the time is now. In today's video, we're gonna be making the journey out west, showing you the entire process and taking my 2011 Toyota Prius to the max and driving over 1600 miles to a place that I had never been before. Now, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Tanner, I'm an only child, and growing up, we did quite a bit of traveling. I played travel hockey for a while. I'm actually an Eagle Scout as well, so I've done a lot of camping, been to plenty of amazing places. But as far as solo journeys, that amounts to about nothing. So recently I got invited to head out west to Colorado to do some riding, but last second, I got hurt and I was on the fence about going and I ended up waiting too long. But the day before they left, I started feeling better. I woke up that morning and could finally get a full breath in. I was still a little bit sore, but I was about 90%. So I wasn't gonna pass up on the opportunity and I started getting things ready. Now a week before, as a lot of you saw, I was getting the KTM ready to go, installing all the parts. So after getting the bike ready, I made sure the Prius was good to go, check the oil. I gotta give a huge shout out to Iceco, really giving me the confidence for this trip. I took probably six days worth of food for myself. And the good thing about the Prius is that I can leave the fridge plugged in, and when I come to a stop, the gasoline engine shuts off and runs off the hybrid battery, so I can run the AC, the heat, and my fridge without having to have the gas engine on 24-7. And funny enough, the day that I left, I had to drive to Cincinnati in the morning to sell a CRF-150RB, so that bike is gone. And I was originally going to head out from there, but I had some last-minute things that I needed to do and get ready, so we drove all the way back home, finished packing, and we hit the road. So I drove up until about two in the morning and I finally decided to pull over and call it a night. Looking back, I probably could have made the trip in one length, but it just wasn't necessary and it's not safe to drive when you're tired like that. So I pulled over. The first spot that I went to was a hotel parking lot that ended up being a little bit busier than expected. It was right out of St. Louis. There's a strip club not too far from there, and I had some stragglers walking through the parking lot, checking out the KTM. Thankfully, I did have it chained up, but I just didn't feel comfortable, and I knew I wouldn't get a good night's sleep. So I got back on the freeway and ended up just pulling over to rest stop, which is what I should have done to begin with. Pro tip, if you have a rig that's small enough, you can pull over right on the on-ramp or on the off-ramp behind some of the semis, and it really leaves no room for anybody to stop, and it's so far away from the actual rest stop that not a lot of people are gonna walk over there, if any. So being by myself, I felt really safe, and I did this throughout the trip a couple times and had zero issues, and I would do it again. But I woke up around 5.30, enjoyed the beautiful sunset, and we hit the road again, headed towards Kansas. 453 miles on this one stretch of road. Got about 10 hours to go. Flying through Kansas right now. I am avoiding all the toll roads, so I've got to see some of the beautiful countryside and I do not regret it. I would definitely do that again rather than having to stop and pay for the tolls. I know it's a little bit faster. It was like one hour faster, so I'll save the money and enjoy no traffic in the countryside. trailer that I've ever seen. What the hell is in there? That is massive. It must be like a double decker. That is a 
nice rig. Shout out to Kansas, man. They care about their motorcycle riders. It's pretty cool. I know I really haven't recorded much of anything on the trip over here, but I just wanted to get out here as quick as possible, enjoy the journey. But man, that feels good. We made it to Colorado in about 24 hours, including my sleeping time. So can't complain with that. But the funniest part about this is I've literally told nobody that I'm going out here. Apart from my family, literally nobody else at home knows. And of course the guys out here have no idea. And I really don't even know where to go. I have a general location, so I'm gonna try to find them without saying anything. It's pretty doubtful. I'm used to smaller campgrounds in Ohio and I'm kind of guessing that this is gonna be a bigger area. So I'm probably gonna have a hard time finding them. Plus I gotta get a trail pass. We'll see what happens. I'd really like to surprise them without saying anything. But we're going to be rolling through Denver here in a bit. And man, I cannot wait to see these mountains. I've only ever been to Colorado flying in a plane. So I've never got to actually journey through the states. And man, I got to say, contrary to a lot of people's opinions, I enjoyed Kansas the most. I really did. A lot of people say it's boring, it's dreadful. I just like putting the cruise control on, kicking back relax route 70 through kansas is super smooth i managed to avoid all the tolls so i didn't have to spend a dime other than fuel to get out here and man we've only filled up three times so far it's right around 50 dollars. so you cannot beat that man I, i'm so happy with everything and i'm not going to say anything yet until we get here but regardless the tesla is doing great and i love this rig so i'm not really sure when you start seeing the mountains pop up because it's still really flat out here but i will bring out the camera when i do Thanks for coming along with me. I did not realize how many wind farms were out there. It's crazy. Look at these clouds too. Beautiful day to be traveling. I'm gonna be stopping in Colorado Springs on the way through to pick up a trail pass, and then I probably have another two hours at least from there, but let's get this done. Oh my God. <coughs> Damn, what the heck, I got so excited. Oh, now I'm gonna have the hiccups. I got so excited because I finally caught a glimpse of the mountains. You can't pick it up on camera with the clouds, but there's some peaks over there. Now you can see it off in the distance there. Oh, man. That is awesome. Road. Look at that, you can actually see the rain up there on the mountains, that is nuts. We are here man, Colorado Springs. Man, this is absolutely beautiful driving down into this valley. A lot of nice houses over here. place and at the Bass Pro right now. So far the Prius was doing absolutely amazing. I couldn't ask for a smoother ride. For those of you that are wondering about towing with it, I've had zero issues. I've towed a four-wheeler with it. Probably the most weight was just two bikes, another person, and gear loaded down. It does more than I would ever need for a riding trip. The only downside, obviously, is you can't stand up in it, which for a longer trip was not the most enjoyable, but you can get by, and my purpose is to get to the locations and get outside of the vehicle. Like, I feel like with a lot of the RVs, 
the campers and the vans, you can wind up just staying inside of the vehicle. And with the Prius, you pretty much have to get outside of the vehicle to stretch out and enjoy yourself. So I like that aspect of it. But for a more long-term solution, it's probably not it. I know people that live in them full-time, so more power to them. Would I want to do it long-term? Me personally, probably not. Especially if you add another person and a dog. It's a little tight, but for a solo trip, it's more than doable, and I was plenty comfortable, especially compared to those that were sleeping in tents. But we haven't made it to the mountains yet, so who knows what's gonna happen. Look at this. Wow. Driving into the mountains right now, this is beautiful. This is the most beautiful landscape that I've witnessed in person. Absolutely breathtaking. Look at this. Wow. Heading deeper into the mountains. I keep running in and out of signal, but I downloaded the map, so I should be good. This is just, I can't say it enough, man. This is so beautiful, man. Everywhere you look, there's just something, man, that mesmerizes you, and you gotta focus while driving, let alone riding, so. Oh, man, it's just nice to take some of this in. This is, this is awesome. I'm about an hour and 20 minutes out. I have no idea if I'm gonna be able to find this place. I have coordinates, I don't know how accurate they are, and that is directly to their campsite. So we're at about 8,200 elevation right now. I can feel it in my breath a little bit, even just from talking. You know, 24 hours ago, we were at sea level. But I'll get used to it soon enough. Just gotta keep breathing. Hot springs, ooh. That sounds nice. Maybe, ooh, that creek. Oh, oh, <laughs> I love this place. See some snow up there. It's actually dropped down to 50 degrees. Earlier today, it was pushing 100. And we are climbing, steady climbing. The Tesla's doing good. I'm able to maintain the speed limit, which is only like 35. But she's not struggling hard at all. Let off in the corners, give her a break, and she's doing real good. I had to pull over for this one. Wow, this is absolutely insane. Hey, Jeremy! What are you guys doing? Hey, Daquan! What are you guys doing? Hey, buddy. Hi. Right. <laughs> and we got one in the middle of the road up here. Hey, Tyrese, get out the way. It's like they're licking salt off the roads almost. Come on, bud. 
Come on, bud. I know some of you are probably like wondering why I'm freaking out so much, but I just really have an appreciation for life and it's just different when you're in complete control of whatever you want to do, whatever destination. It's just the ultimate feeling of freedom. But the drive through that mountain pass was absolutely beautiful outside of Colorado Springs. But I only had the coordinates and this picture to go by as far as where they were camped out at. And believe it or not, I actually found them. So we're coming up on Taylor Park Reservoir right here, which is supposed to be in the area that we're staying. This is a lot bigger than I thought it was gonna be. This lake is huge. But we're taking a left up here at this road and I don't know when the going's gonna start to get rough. I know there's gonna be some dirt and gravel roads, so let's do this. Well, we made it to a dirt road and I think I'm actually going to find them, guys. So I don't wanna say it too soon, but I think we did it. Got about half a mile left on the dirt road. Oh my God, my ball joints. <laughs> oh man, I'm ready to get a good night's sleep and do some riding, man. Let's go. I pulled up, they saw the Ohio plate and we're like, what the heck are you doing here? So it worked out in the end. I found the campsite. Overall, I couldn't have asked for a better journey. Thank you all for coming along with me. I was extremely ecstatic that the Prius made it with zero issues. Not only did it make it, but it got me there comfortably and the dirt road gave me no issues. But I won't spoil too much of the rest of the trip. You're gonna have to stay tuned. So subscribe if you're new. Consider turning those notifications on so you get notified every time that I post a video. My schedule is Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with a live stream on Sunday. But I hope you all enjoyed the journey. Thanks for coming along with me. And until Wednesday's video, I'll see you then.